Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And we're continuing with our series of how to use somatic cell count to solve utter health problems on farms. In this video short, we're going to be talking about how to use somatic cell count trends to identify cows that have problems with contagious mastitis. And if you'd like to know more about what contagious mastitis is, you can review some of our earlier videos. Now, in order to use somatic cell count trends to identify if you've got contagious or environmental mastitis, you need to have monthly individual cow somatic cell count data that's summarized by days in milk and summarized so that the trends for the first lactation animals are separate from the trends for the older lactation animals. And the way we use this data is we review the patterns of prevalence across the lactation and we review the patterns of prevalence by comparing prevalence in first lactation and older animals. The principle is very simple. Contagious mastitis is transmitted when the teats of healthy cows are exposed to bacteria that came from the milk of subclinically infected other cows in the herd. These infections are typically chronic so prevalence goes up as cows go through lactation and cows and as cows age. It's very simple. The, the longer a cow milks, the more the opportunities for them to get exposed and infected. And then because of these infections persist, these infections accumulate across the lactation uh, period. So a typical trend is that when you have contagious mastitis, you see a relatively high overall prevalence. And that's because, again, they're long-term infections. So typically we'd have a prevalence of over 20 or sometimes even over 30% of the herd. The prevalence is greater in the older cows as compared to the younger cows because the older cows have had more opportunities to become exposed and because once they develop those infections, they don't easily get rid of them. And then within a lactation group, the prevalence increases as the cows go through that lactation cycle. So prevalence increases as we go across uh, from early lactation to late lactation. Now this graph that I'm showing is very typical. We've got the, the purple bars, which are prevalence in first lactation animals. And you'll see there isn't a huge increase in this particular herd until they get into the latest stages of lactation. Then the prevalence is about double of the earlier lactation animals. You can see this, or you could see just a gradual increase. And then in the blue bars, which is the prevalence by stage of lactation for the second plus lactation animals, you can see a very typical trend. Prevalence in early lactation is about half of prevalence in later lactation and just gradually goes up. There's one more very typical thing. You can see that the prevalence in the older cows is more than double the prevalence in the younger, younger cows. These are the type of trends you typically see when you have infections with Staph aureus or Streptococcus agalactia or even other pathogens that can develop long-term subclinical infections such as subclinically infected uh, environmental strep problems. The consequences of exceeding our goal or developing contagious mastitis can be very severe. When we see this type of pattern, we need to make sure we identify the type of pathogens by doing cultures of high somatic cell count cows and then developing a control program to reduce the probability of developing new infections. In our next video short, we're going to be talking about how to use somatic cell count trends to identify problems with environmental mastitis. Thank you.